Damn, we got two phones over here. All right, y'all. <clears throat> I'm excited to have my very first Detroit born and raised, right? Born and raised mm-hmm. artist in a building. Um, Detroit music has a special place in my heart because it was forced upon me by a good friend of mine after being around him for so long. And that's all he listens to. But I'm here to now get to know Skilla Baby and his taste in music and everything that makes him who he is and really why he has an old soul. Because I know he got an old soul. You can tell he got an old soul. Um, Skilla Baby, welcome to the Pink Room. Thank you, Pink Room. You're welcome. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get into it with you, all right? Because he said he didn't want to know about the show. He just said, surprise me. So, surprise. Um, what's the first song that you remember hearing as a baby, toddler, two, three, four years old? The earliest you can recall. The earliest I can recall. Mm-hmm. I'm so lonely. I have nobody. I'm on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was in my ear. That was right in my ear. <laughs> he looking mad. It's okay. I heard, I heard you try to hit that note though. I heard it. Um, that's Akon, and who was on that? And um, Akon and who? Oh um, no, it was but I used T-Pain? to cry. No, it wasn't T Pain. I'm tripping. I ain't gonna lie. I used to cry to that song. You used to cry to that song. I don't know why. I used to think about my granny. Was she gone when that song came out? I swear to God, too. Damn. Like that was Bob. That's, so that's the first song. My mom, song. my sisters be making fun of me because of that, too. So. Because you cry whenever you hear that song. Yeah. I don't cry now. Okay. When the last time you cried? Mm-mm. You said, mm-mm. You I just said, know, mm-mm. Like, you don't know? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, Akon, Lonely, I Get Lonely, whatever it's called. I remember that song, too. It was played, like, on the radio. Mm-hmm. They played that thing out. It got on my nerves. Kept making me cry. <laughs> Wait, so you kept crying every time you heard it? Every time. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying like to five, think. Four, four or five, though. Like, yeah, that's something I'm trying to think how old you were. Okay, so that makes sense. That makes sense. You was, you was a baby. You were in kindergarten. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's the first song you remember hearing. Tell me about the first time that you actually tried to make a song for yourself. Like, <laughs> you wrote something down, put pen to paper. Like, did I go to the studio or I just tried? No, just try it. No, I, I was writing. I was writing a little stupid at young, like probably elementary school. I don't remember it, but I used to write it down. What was you writing it for? To go back to school and re- and recite it, or for no, yourself? I was too embarrassed at that time to show people my music. I was embarrassed for a long time to tell people I was trying to rap, like not even trying to rap, just rapping. Like really? I used to just do that, just like keep that to myself. So nobody was anybody around you from like any of day ones knew this or you you was just a closet rapper. I was a closet rapper. No, I ain't about to say closet bad, rapper. Like, like, man. Not that word, but you I know what I mean. I was like, I was, I for sure was hiding it from people. I think the first person I showed a rap to was my mom. Like, okay. I don't know how I built that courage. Wait, what was in the rap? What was in the rap? What was in it? Was it something she didn't want your mama to see or no? No, it's just I didn't like you be embarrassed showing people like that type of stuff. Really? Well, you clearly have overcome that. Yeah. When do you think you overcame that embarrassment to get into showing it off and getting a, a studio for yourself? Probably somewhere like in high school or something. I had, um, had this journal I was writing all my raps in, and then I was taking it to school, and I used to hoop. And then one of my teammates stole my journal, got to write, read my raps in front of the whole team. I was really, really embarrassed by that. That's whack. Yeah, he was on some bullshit. Wait, why he? What? I want to know the story behind that though. Why did he do that? He didn't just up and steal the journal. Because I was the youngest on the team, and they just could do anything for real. Ah, uh, okay. It was hazing you. Hazing me for real. Yeah. So he read all your raps to the in the locker room or like to the coach, like outside. I'm locker just, room. Damn. Um, to the team type. Of, but then they like you sweet, but I'm like I don't. I ain't even focused on that. So you was more focused on basketball. Yeah, I used to love yeah. basketball. I mean, you still love it, dude. To now, do you? Not as much. Not as much. I, I mean, used to love it. Like I could play from twelve to twelve. Like not as like hell. No, I don't even feel like moving. <laughs> I think I'm old now. <laughs> I'm sorry why that's so funny to me. I don't feel like moving either half the damn time. But we here. I'm you, getting fat. All type of. You're not getting fat. You skinny. Okay, look, I don't know. Anyways, all right, let's go back to some of your first. You, 
like you said, you were kind of not really, not that you weren't confident. You just really weren't putting it out there that she was making music or that you could make music. Yeah. But when you would go make the music, when you would go get in your journal and write, like, would it be because you were inspired by something going on or were you just writing your journal every night, like to yourself? And that's how you happen to write to yourself through rap? I'd be inspired by stuff, but sometimes I'd just be doing I'd be having to keep myself busy or I'd do some dumb shit. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I was like, as a kid, I was like down there slow. Like, yeah. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, like, I ain't care. You weren't stimulated by enough around you. Yeah, like, I just, idle time, idle mind. I'd do, do some dumb shit. Jump down the stairs, anything, do just anything. I'm, I'm just doing dumb shit. How many times you done broke a bone? I never really broke no bones for real, for real. I don't know how. I never really broke nothing. <laughs> I used to like to fuck my ankle up hoping. Yeah. It. All right. Well, one of the moments oh, that you. I broke my wrist punching it before. Damn. Broke my wrist. Okay. That wasn't different. That's, that's not athletic. Well, it still is athleticism. But regardless, from basketball to punching. You didn't have your ups and downs, but ups and downs, you, yeah. you like you never got hurt hurt outside of you getting shot, obviously. Mm -mm. But you here today. You know my life. Look, I know a little bit. <laughs> Muy piquito. Um, let me get. Don't do that. I'm not Espanol. Um, I see, I see. That means so so. <laughs> Wait, you speak Spanish? No. Come on, say dice the pink room in Espanol. I know when y'all. You know how to say it. How yeah, how do you say the pink room in Spanish? Did not go look at Miguel. My bad. Let <laughs> me assume Miguel speaks Spanish. Speak Spanish. Oh my God, they don't. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my, I'm tripping, dog. I'm tripping. You, you, you trying to interview me on my show? You got me laughing, getting off course. Now let me stop. <clears throat> I want to talk about though one of the moments you got inspired and went to go write in your journal. And do you recall the story or something like significant that happened to you when you were younger, where you was like, I gotta go write, write or rap about this. Really write about it, but it was through a rapping, you know, esque style. Tell me about one of them. Hmm. You just had to get that. I don't Push know. Push it out, Skiller. My first time really um, writing was like taking it serious was after I read this poem. I had to recite it in school. It was called Mother to Son by Langston Hughes. Nice. Damn, I ain't heard that one. I feel like I probably should have. What, Langston Hughes? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's one of them names. No, that's a hard poem. You got to read I, that. I, I know. I don't, Mother I don't to know. Son. All right, so what what about it inspired you to go write something for yourself? See, I told you, like, I, the first person I, I read my raps to was my mama. So the poem is about, a, a, like, a, a young black mother just telling her son, like, I ain't got everything, but we together. Like, life for me ain't been no Christmas there. Like, oh, it's it that one. Like okay. That. Like, <laughs> I'm going to get chewed up in the comments. I know what you're talking about, though. Mm -hmm. I know. She, so then you, you read... That what you wrote in response to that poem to her, and it was your first time. Like probably so, yeah. Ah, that like I get inspired it. me to start like doing poetry and rapping and shit. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about the first time outside of you going to your mama and telling her about this that you actually felt like you know what I want to either record this or I want to go rap it with my homies in the studio. Like you know I want to show everybody else you know my skills literally. Off I don't the court. know. I went to the studio just off faith, like. I seen everybody looking cool rapping. It's like the rappers was cool where I was from. Mm -hmm. Like they weren't famous to the world, but they was famous to us. So I'm like, they look cool. I'm gonna do mm. this. Actually, I have to ask this question that my a big fan of yours specifically wanted me to ask because this is a good bridge into it. Okay, one second, one second, one second. Okay, he says, <clears throat> I know a lot of Detroit rappers like Payroll, Babyface, Ray, Peasy, HBK drew inspiration from Blade Icewood and the Street Lords, among other artists. Who would you say your sound is inspired by, if anyone in particular? All them. All them, Swoop. All, All them. them. Like, I ain't getting inspiration from Blade or Street Lords. That yeah. was my era. I got inspired by them, the names you just named, so. Yeah. So around, when you was coming up, though, outside of you hearing stuff on the radio, Lonely, whatever, Akon, whatever, when you would go listen to a lot of the music from those names right there, or even the ones that came before them, where would you go on to listen to that at? Um, YouTube. Like, mm -hmm. we playing that 
everybody playing it in school. You know, iPhones just was starting to go. Like when me growing up, iPhones just started going. Like yeah. so now everybody got iPhones. We playing it on our phones. We um. We like just going out home, listen to it. Like everybody listen to it. This is a cool thing to do. Like in Detroit, like for a long time, like ten years straight, Detroit only listened to Detroit music. We ain't listen to like out of towners. We weren't really with the commercial rap. Yeah, everybody listens to Detroit music. So that's why I was saying like everybody in Detroit was famous to Detroiters. So. These yeah. the guys I looked up to, Babyface, Ray Team, Eastside, PZ, the Dope Boys. HBK was my favorite rapper. It was Lil Wayne and HBK. Like, so them was my two favorite rappers. Lil Wayne, like Lil Wayne, HBK, Drake and Meek. Like these no, that's on an my interesting time list. Drake, like, Meek, Lil Wayne. Interesting. Drake but, being up there is interesting too. No, nah, Drake that thing. That thing. <laughs> I like how you said that. Okay. Um, so let's talk about your first performance then. Because I do know that for like a year straight, at least what I'm going to assume from other interviews I've seen of you, but for a year straight, you were going to the showcase that DJ BJ was throwing mm -hmm. and performing literally for a year straight. Mm -hmm. Did you perform before that at all, ever? Or was that your first time performing I used on to that do showcase? Show I just did a, a whole bunch of showcases like DJ BJ. I just went to his a year straight, but like I was doing other showcases too. But Tell me about like, the first one. I the first know. time you ever got on the stage, how that was, what you was wearing, all that. I don't remember what I was wearing, but it was probably some bush. <laughs> for sure. Like, not even probably. Some bush. <laughs> Didn't look like a rapper. Didn't have no stage presence. I probably was getting drunk at a young age. I don't drink now, but I was getting drunk for sure. Probably <laughs> off some Remy. Or some Hennessy. I was a was the Remy in your guy. hand when you was on the stage? One time I performed and broke the Remy bottle. Like, dropped it. Was so drunk. <laughs> was mad as hell. I did it. But kept performing. Like, just doing stupid <laughs> I told you I was slow. That, that don't mean you slow. That just means you was in the moment. You no, really... Cause no, because no normal person would have <laughs> did that. Like, no normal cool person. <laughs> I feel so uncool. Like, I'm going to just let that be known. Like... I ain't think that was cool. Like, that wasn't cool to me. Like, I lost cool points. I dropped the Remy. How much was left in the room? A lot. Damn. It was the big Remy bottle, too. It wasn't a small one. Nah. That was big. Like, I was drunk, drunk. You kept performing, though, right? No, I kept performing. Okay. Copy. I think I looked down <laughs> at the bottle, act like it ain't happening. And got the yelling again. Like, you know how people, when they first perform, yeah, they just yeah. yell to the top of their lungs. <laughs> this is what I was doing. I was about to say, why was you yelling? But if this was, like, your, one of your first times performing. So do you think that going to those showcases, especially the DJ BJ one for that whole year, that obviously helped you grow into more stage presence and all that stuff? Definitely. Like, got it's you. just like you learn as you go. Like, just like hooping and stuff. It's just like a practice make perfect. Yeah. Like, repetition. And you know how, like, when you're practicing, even in athletics and stuff like that, once you find a new form, once you find something that works, your body kind of now adjusts to, like, being able to get into that mode again because you want muscle that. Muscle memory. Yeah, that kind of muscle memory. When it comes to performing, is there anything that you learned that completely changed the game for you in terms of, like, up in the level of how you perform? And, and can you share that with other artists or aspiring people? I feel like the, the main thing I learned about performing is um, connecting to people. And certain people connect to people in different ways. Yeah. I'm not going to say my way is your way. Yeah. But I connect to people like me and Bands were just talking about. I relate to people. So people like me because they feel like they can touch me or I feel like I'm normal. So yeah. they feel like, oh, this guy cool. So that's how a lot of people relate to me and connect to me. Somebody else might say something that girls might like or my like or anything so mm -hmm. it's really you just connecting to your audience but you got to know what your target audience is first I what's your like. target audience i don't know i can i got this one audience full of kids where kids just love me then i got another audience full of girls where they love something about me and then i got like a old soul so all the older people mm -hmm. you know you know that's actually economically speaking you got every bucket in making making a I guess making up your streams because mm -hmm. at least for me when I'm looking at 
certain scenes of music, there's like the scene that like only the TikTok age kids or whatever are listening to. But like when they start making music outside of that, then their TikTokers are like, what is that? And but then people like me, it's like, oh, I like that. He got some talent. But it's kind of hard. Like, like Speak last on it. year, I was doing all street. So some girls are like it. So it wasn't really like, um, it, it wasn't really like uh, a big market of people that street. Mm-hmm. So then this year, I got big songs. They for girls, but the street, the street guys, like damn, where the street music at? You damn, that's me? real. But then like the rappy rappy people, they want me to rap, be rap, rappy rap. So yeah. it's like it's hard to when you dropping music. That's why it's, I like dropping projects. Because I can show my diversity, but when you dropping singles and stuff like that, and you dedicated to a demographic of people, another demographic of people would be like, "Oh man, he, he, it's not like, yeah, why are you putting out that type of stuff?" Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I feel you. It's hard. <clears throat> but you yourself, you just want to get out there and make music for mm-hmm. you for yourself before the fans, right? Not necessarily. Really? I really want to. I make music for myself, but I don't put it out. Like, I listen to all the stuff I like and don't put it out. Uh, I put music out there to sell it, to sell. Like, I wanted my music to sell. So I'm putting this, like, my new song, Bay. Like, I yeah. specifically did that for us, for the females. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dedicate a whole session to doing that. Yeah. You really business-minded with it, though. For Definitely. Real. In, the, in another interview that I watched of yours, you were talking about how the bullet changed you to a businessman. For sure. <laughs> and seeing everything, and even what we were just talking about before this, like, as the numbers, do you think that that takes away from your fun that you have with music? No. Because really? I keep, I keep um, people around me that we have fun. Like, we have fun in our own way, our yeah. circle. Like, I go, I make sure I live a normal life as much as I can. Like, I don't be trying to be no stuck-up rapper, like, Oh my God, I just got to go to the studio. I don't want to be a robot. A robot, yeah. I ain't been no robot. I'm cool. All right, let's go back and talk about that a little later. But right now, I want to talk about what you would listen to around the house or like the influences of music before you started to develop your own taste and sound. Because from what I understand, your dad was a little bit older, so he had a certain soul and a certain type of taste around him. And then I'm sure you had other influences around, but tell me about some of your favorite memories listening to music with your dad or music that your dad would play. See, I I enjoy it now, but I didn't used to enjoy it because my daddy used to do like turn the TV up all the way and turn the radio up at the same time, and I never could get it. Like, why the f- you doing this? These on both on the same thing, or no? They both just he watching the movie and listening to music at the same time. <laughs> like, what type of weird <laughs> is you? So I'm li- I'm watching Scream or something, and I'm hearing Anita Baker the best. <laughs> Or the Jackson 5, some Motown. But I enjoy it now, just think about because my daddy gone. Like, I wish I could do that. But, like, it just, the, he showed me, like, a diverse amount of music. Like, mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, but my, my biggest, like, the biggest thing I've been miss about listening to music like that and why I still do it, like, older songs, because music used to be, made based off love now it's like made off bunch of hate like I wish they would bring that back like mm-hmm. nah I like that one I, not not that one but I I like that you said that because there's a whole portion of this show that I want to talk about what you think is missing in music so you kind of already said it but I <clears throat> I think that when it comes to a lot of that Motown era music, even with what it sounds like, it just sounds like he was having fun when you wrote Feel it. Feel good music. Yeah, and if and you felt good when you wrote it, and you felt good when you performed it, mm-hmm. and that, like, it wasn't about, like, showing off. It was about making yourself feel good through how you, your relationship with the music. Um, but speaking of that era and, and your appreciation of it, I'm going to ask you this question. And it's just, like, say whatever comes to the top of your mind, all right? <clears throat> so... If you could be a fly on the wall in a recording session of any song, what would it be and why? A recording session of any song? Michael Jackson Thriller. Yeah. Because I want to know what just made you come up with this and why. I feel like 
I don't really like I think Michael Jackson was a great musician, but I really like the idea of Michael Jackson more than the music of Michael Jackson. Like his whole persona is like, oh, my God, it's Michael Jackson. Like, I don't just go around banging Michael Jackson music. Yeah. But if Michael Jackson was still alive, I'd be fanned out. Yeah, I think like more would. than my favorite artist. Like I'd be fanned out just the whole persona of Michael Jackson. Damn, that's real. Like, kind of how, like, I'm I'm not going to say Ice Spice, but you know how back in the day that fandom, like, people screaming, falling out when they see an artist was a thing? I don't think that's the case anymore. Yeah. Is that the case? Who's a, who's that big in terms of, like, the fandom? I don't know. It depends because it's just be like, with social media now, nobody's really like a myth anymore. Mm. Everybody can be reached. So if I ever reach that like level of fandom and in, uh, in my artistry, I delete all my social media. Why? Because I miss that in music. Like when you see Michael Jackson, it's like, oh my God, I just seen Michael Jackson. I can't go on Instagram and see where Michael Jackson is. You're right. He ain't posting from a story in a studio. Michael while Jackson here. might be in London. You never know. Damn. That's facts. That's where I think music is a lot, a lot of is missing. Like, it's missing like the um, the ground level. Like having to do the ground level work. Like, yeah, I can reach a hundred million people with a click of a button right now. Like, you don't think that that gives people the opportunity to, I mean, honestly, lie to people and show something, sell, sell again, businessman, again, like sell a character. Like, you there could be. Could you be can't anybody just anybody in the world. Yeah, you can you can you can literally I have be an Michael a, Jackson. You, yeah, you could. You can have an AI filter on your face and you could be Michael Jackson. But I'm saying, like, do you think that gives artists the opportunity to become something that maybe that they're not in order to sell into these audiences that you're talking about? I feel like a lot of people not in love with music like people used to be. And mm -hmm. a lot of people really wouldn't have even been allowed in the studio in a certain era. So social media and stuff like that allows a lot of people to get off in a way that they never would. So I think it's beneficial, but to certain people, it hinders them. That's facts. You see, I shut up right there because we're going to clip that. That's hard. Yeah, no, people aren't in love with music like they used to be. And I don't I don't want to use this show as a, a place where I just bash people that don't love it like I do. Because, I mean, I could be weird to somebody who just loves music so much, but... It's it's a part of how people experience it too. Like if it's an artist that you could tell don't really love what he's doing or love who he is or love what he's saying, then it don't even make me that hype. I might shake my booty to it or something, but like then I don't care to go get to know that artist. Or when that artist is speaking about something outside of what they rapping to me, I'm not gonna get to know them that much because it don't sound real. No, it's just like a certain etiquette that musicians don't have nowadays. Like, what is that etiquette? Uh, What's the rule book? If you got three three etiquette rules on it to get to, to love music, you gotta be like this. Um, number one, you gotta be willing to do it, even if when it's not making you money, when it's not beneficial, you would go broke to do it. For two, um, people's not like trying to perfect their craft. People not practicing, people not doing anything, they not rehearsing, working on stage presence, they ain't even working on music. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how you in love with it? It make you money though, so I understand. Mm -hmm. People be in love with making money, so I never bash nobody for that, make your money. But them two of the rules, I feel like, and then it's like, even outside of music, like, uh, it's a certain, like, uh, dedication you're supposed to have to the people that made you rich. Hmm. Like, not no label, like, fans and stuff like that. It's a certain way you carry yourself, I feel like. So, because it's like, they didn't ask you to be you. Mm -hmm. You were asked for this life, so that's how I be looking at it. Thank but you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. That was his etiquette rule book of loving music. Um, I want to ask you a couple, not questions. I want to give you prompts and I want you to answer them with song titles. 
Now, from what I understand as well, you are a fan of all different types of music, mm-hmm. even Adele and a lot of like R and B, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna say four to five. R&B goats, in my opinion, female R&B goats, and I want you to respond with the song that you think of when I say their name, and likely it's a song you like to them, clearly, mm-hmm. right? All right, first one, Mary J. Blige. My life. Here, you see how fast he came up with that? He's good at this game. All right, Adele. Someone like you. Okay, Fantasia. Um, this is my mama favorite song, but. Damn, I gotta call my mama. I ain't gonna call lie. your mama. Damn, I ain't even gonna let her know we on the interview. This is crazy. This is her favorite song. Mama's Mama's always act handsome. like I'm in the studio. It's pink. <laughs> when I see it's you, for sure. So. True. When thing. I see. Hey, ma, I'm in the studio. I'm trying to think of this hook so I can put it. What's that Fantasia song? Can you teach me how to sing that real quick? <laughs> Are you freaking serious? Yeah, I'm trying to put it on this song. Which one? Your favorite Fantasia song. When I see you, when I see you. Uh. <laughs> Not just to do Did you hang up on her? Yeah. You... You got to say, all right, mama, bye. Uh-uh. You hung up while she was singing? Uh-uh. All right, when I see you by Fantasia, we got two more. Damn, Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, oh, my God. Oh, what's my favorite? She got, Whitney Houston got shit. some shit. I ain't going to lie. I got to look at my Apple Music for Whitney Houston. Apple Music. While you look for that one, I'm going to give you one last one. This is a the, a female band, In Vogue. In Vogue, oh, my God. And Vogue, and my favorite song by In Vogue is probably Hold On. Oh, Hold On to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whitney Houston. Uh, you got to name one Whitney, only one. And that's YTB Fat would call her Lil I want to dance with somebody. Yeah. Yeah, that's my shit. Yeah, yeah. Not you punch your hand. <laughs> no, that was my shit. Yeah, head. no, that was that one give me hype. All right, I like that. Thanks for calling your mom and getting that clarified, but... You hung up on her. Let me call her back. Bro. She called her back. Damn, mama. My mom was, she would fly down, or not fly down here, take the train up here and be my bitch if I did that. <clears throat> my bad, my phone down, mom. What is it, bro? I'm really on this interview, and she she really, like, mad that I hung up on you. So <laughs> she the host, mad because I hung up on you in the middle of the interview. Oh, that's what you always do. Uh, yeah, I love you. Love you too. Bye. Oh, okay. So y'all always do this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got you. All right. Shout out to the mamas out there. Okay, let's get to the next section so we can um, wrap it up soon. All right. Um, I guess at this point, now I kind of want to understand a little bit more about what you got coming next and mm-hmm. how you are transitioning into different forms of your sound, right? Mm-hmm. If that is the case. Mm-hmm. So tell us more about how, like, you know, you came out doing more street rap. Now you rapping for the ladies, but like, do you? Are there other frontiers you're exploring with? My next chapter, I'm gonna be rappy, rappy, like, like my favorite rappers, like Lil Wayne, like Drake, like that type of stuff. So my next, um, like, bulk of music I put out probably be real rappy, rappy. You like, already got that recorded. Oh, hip hop. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of stuff mm-hmm. like that. In Old the arsenal. Hip-hop. Yeah, like real open beats, like. Um, the alchemist type beats, like real yeah. open, real rappy. Like I probably put that type of stuff out. I like that. Where? So wait, have we heard anything like that from you yet? Is it out? Mm-hmm. I got some like old conscious type stuff. It's out. Where is it at? It's called Trayvon. Trayvon is that on SoundCloud? Probably so. Okay, maybe so. All right. Well, like mystical. Were you ever dropping music on SoundCloud at one point before you got signed and went to DSPs and stuff? Mm-hmm. Okay. I dropped my first song on SoundCloud, I think. Okay, yeah. So then it, it probably is still on there then. Mm-hmm. I'll go have to look that up. All right, so that's what you got coming up next. Um, and then we also kind of already touched on what you think music is missing. 
Now, when we also talked about like what the etiquette is of loving music or what it really means to love music and even be considered someone that's doing this for a timeless art, right? Um, do you think that, or what do you think people are, excuse me, let me put it to you this way. What would you tell a 13 year old boy right now who's getting into this because it looks popular, it looks cool, it looks fun. Now you TikTok, you can order a chain off TikTok damn near. Mm-hmm. Like, what would you tell him to get him in the mindset of getting into this game for the longevity and for the business of it? I mean, I just ask him to figure out what he in it for. You might just want to make money. Some people just want to sell out shows. Some mm-hmm. people, like, some people don't want to be a stadium artist. Some people want to be a club artist. So it's all about what you want out of music, for real, for real. I'm not going to tell somebody to make this a timeless art because that might not be your goal. Mm. might not make you happy. I'm in it to be timeless. Like, I tell a lot of people, like, like, like I was supposed to have a certain artist on the song. One of the biggest artists in the world, I said no, because I don't think that song fit them. Mm. And 50 years from now, when I'm listening to this song, I don't want to hear them on it. So. That's facts. That's just me. Somebody else might be in it for attention or the clout you get off for right now or like the media gratification. I'm not for real. I really, my career goes slow than fast. You talked about before how like you was really just rapping and so all of a sudden it worked kind of mm-hmm. for you. Did you know that you wanted to be Thomas when 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 you realized that it worked? Or tell I'm, me how tell me what how your relationship with your career grew versus like you just writing in the journal. I and always wanted to be timeless, but it was a point in time where I was going with what the crowd wanted, like okay. or what the in crowd was doing, and it didn't work for me at all. I had to take a second back, like damn, I don't work on these type of beats, or I don't talk like this, or this is not organically me. So yeah. I gotta. Do get back to being me. And when I got back to being me and doing what I wanted, it worked. Yeah. Facts. Okay. Well, I know you said also that you, uh, you're you pretty positive. You don't give off any negative vibes either. You could not want to be here right now. I would not know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's really big and important for a lot of people to start adapting to as we have so many, stimuli, so many stimuli, I guess, around us all the time. But, like, what do you do to keep yourself in that headspace? Because it happens all day, every day. <laughs> It be like this, like, I didn't want to come here, but I want to be here. Like, it just came with me and you. Like, I don't like interviews, so it be like, I don't really be wanting to do it. But when I meet nice people, you give off positive vibes and good energy. Thank I be wanting to be there. So that's like, because you was probably some interviews you see me, I was probably looking dry because I didn't want to be there. But Yeah, like, I, I was kind of nervous. Myself, like, I just try to do normal stuff, do yeah. what make me happy for her. That's what's up. So doing normal stuff, doing what makes you happy, mm-hmm. keeps you in that headspace. Yeah. And you think obviously being in your career, like you were t- constantly being pulled in and out of that, or people are trying to pull you in and out of that? Being being where we're from, like the neighborhoods we come from, people try to pull you in and out of that positive, True. negative. You, be, uh, you hear something positive or have a great day. The next day it might be negative. You might hear ten things, you know, and then the negative would always outweigh the positive. So it'd be like, yeah, I went ten steps forward and twenty steps back. Like far as negative, positive, it's always push pull. So I just be preparing for the worst all the time, for real. Damn, that's facts though. Well, all right, you just inspired me to ask a new question, and it's I'm gonna name this one timeless. So if you could. Name like let's say just say one track now. If some if another track comes out, you can you can say that one too. But what's and what's the most recent song you've heard that you would consider a timeless track? A timeless track. Um, the most recent one though. Most recent. Like new age timeless music. Who's making it? What song is it? See today timeless and. Old timeless is different. Like, it'll never be the same. It'll never be the same because, like, I seen music change and like the ear change. Not even musicians. Like musicians gonna always change, but the ear change. Like the stuff that we listen to right now, people get away with. 
my mama and them era wouldn't, they were more conscious and like, so it was like, they would have never listened to it. Hmm. So it's like, I can't tell you what's timeless right now. Like, because it's like, I be feeling like everything right now is built off like just the now. Like, people ain't thinking, like, I feel like people was doing music because they was hungry back then. Like, now people doing music because it's a cool thing to do. You got 500 rappers in every city, so it'd be like, <laughs> who dedicating themselves to make timeless music? I think Lil Baby doing a lot of timeless music, for real. Right. I'll give you that. I think Future do a lot of timeless music. Yeah. Um, I think All My Life was a um, timeless song. Oh, by, by Dirk, Dirk yeah. and J. Cole, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, yeah. I think, like, I think it. they took their time to make it. Like, that's why I think make timeless music. I don't think it's rushed. Like, you feel me? He got some stuff coming, too, that that's goes up under that vein. Because a lot of music right now is based, like, mu- music is pushed off the neighborhoods and the clubs right now. And the hip-hop, like, in our community is based off clubs and, like, the neighborhoods. So it'd be like the same people not gonna be in the club fifty years from now. So you it might not even the clubs might not even be the end thing. Like, you know, so it's you never know. People like my daddy that was going to the ballrooms and shit like mm-hmm. that. They weren't going to clubs. So it's like Stepping out. now we go to clubs. Other people used to meet up on the like street niggas meeting up in their neighborhoods, bank of music. So it's like, I can't tell you what's gonna be timeless. Cause the TikTok kids love stuff that I don't even understand. Like the real super fast music, nobody's saying nothing on it. It's like music turning from lyricism to dancing. Like, like these kids love dancing. Like, and they doing dance moves that I ain't even know exists. Like, <laughs> So it's like timeless music to them might be a dance song. Like, you feel me? Yeah, that's fact. So that I is. can't tell you what's going to be timeless. Thank you for that response. First of all, I just want to say, I be I'm, I was over here laughing at half the stuff he was saying. Not that it's funny, but it's just, it's it's real. It's very real. It's the way that he's saying it, though, with a straight face that I, that I know is genuine, that you were literally expressing your... No, because I just be studying, like, the ear, though, and what people like and stuff, like, looking up numbers, other people's numbers and stuff. And I try to, like, make some of my music to to move with the crowd. I Mm -hmm. do. Like, I do songs with people that I wouldn't even think I would do songs with only because it is a business and you got to sell music and you got to sell what they like. So if you want the kids to listen to your music, you got to make some that they can dance to. Mm-hmm. Or if you want some girls to listen to your music, you got to big them up. You got to, you feel me? You got to reassure mm-hmm. them that they pretty or something like that. You want some street to listen to your music, you got to talk about your ops or somebody dying or something like that or something they can relate to. So yeah, you just got to do it. One day I want to hear like at least like, a, or I want you to make a playlist of like five tracks of yours from this arsenal that you got that's just, that you want to hear for mm-hmm. you, not for the, not for any of the segments, not for the ladies, the street, none of that. Because me, as a music lover, I would want to hear what you want to hear mm-hmm. to understand why you had an ear that you got. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So even if you put that little playlist on SoundCloud or whatever, and you just like that's just that's just skill is skill is taste or like skill is beat. I don't know whatever you are gonna call it. Just some. For people who want to know about you outside of what you do, like outside of outside of the business of music, like really what your sound is outside of that. Mm-hmm. But um, okay. Thank you for your responses. I just been sitting here listening to you. You've been talking most of the time, and I wanted to give you that space. Oh, I talk too much. No, 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 no. Well, honestly, there was so much I was supposed to ask you, and there was a whole flow that this was supposed to go through. It didn't really go through that, but I did not want to interrupt you talking because you were saying some really. And honestly, this is a really great interview to me, in my opinion. Um, so you have one question you can ask me before we wrap it up. You don't gotta ask me nothing, but if you have a question, you can go ahead and ask. What's your favorite Skiller Baby song? Gorgeous. <sighs> Gorgeous. I know, I know. I love that song. Why why you look like that? Is that all the all the ladies' favorite song? I don't know. I think they saw Mama 
between Babe Mama and Gorgeous. Probably them three. I, well, when I first, well, remember I told you how I had a friend that was always playing either your type beats or your music. I never knew it was you until he would be like, I'll play Skill Baby or da da da. I'm like, who the f is that? And then when Gorgeous got popping, I was like, oh, this Skill Baby. Swoop always playing him. Shout out to Swoop. He always playing his music or type beats. So then I was like, oh, I like him now. Like, cause now I, I was hearing your music. I just didn't know it was you. But Gorgeous was the one that I could like, you know. Feel gorgeous too. Feel cute too. So mm -hmm. that's why it was my favorite. But that's it, y'all. Let me wrap it up. I know you got to go and get out of here soon. Thank you for coming to the Pink Room. Thank you for sharing your taste in music, your perspective, everything. Um, I, what you said, it sits really close to me just because I'm sitting here working in the role that I do have. And I'm, I'm wondering why people hear things the way they do or why certain things stimulate the crowds or the fans more than others versus the music that you want to consider timeless. I don't know, like you said, if Timeless will ever look the same. It, well, it won't. We said it won't. But um, I think that as long as there are artists like you that at least know what the, I guess, what the environment looks like and what, what's really out there, like you can make music for you, but also be aware of what the streets look like or what the clubs look like and what, what things look like at the time. So you can yeah. continue to grow as a business. I think the Timeless stamp is like crazy because if you really think about it, like, think about it like, we ain't gonna be here in 50 years, right? So it'd be like, since we ain't gonna be here in 50, 60 years, if you think about it, none of these kids know who, like these artists are that we was talking about, like the old school artists, they don't listen to that. They don't listen to Michael Jackson or they don't listen to Anita Baker or Whitney Houston. So this wouldn't be played. You're this, right. So how, you can't really call any, I don't know what the, how we would call it, timeless, because timeless means, they never going to stop playing it. And when I talk to some of these kids, they don't even know who some of these Motown artists are. And some of damn, them are that major, heart. huge artists. So it'd be like, oh, damn, they ain't going to never play that. But we got to pass down the recipes then. Like, they don't like it. If they don't like it, they, they don't like They it. ain't going to like it cleaning up in my house, but they're going to listen like, to you it. You got to think like his old schools, he sleep over there weird as hell. His <laughs> old schools, you feel me, Chevelles and shit like that. Our kids old schools is gonna be like Hellcats, scat packs. Like that's gonna be their oldies. God. It's gonna be their old school cars. He weird. Turn the camera back on. He weird as hell. <laughs> do you think oh before we this is to to answer not answer, but to go on this, do you think Keisha Cole's love is timeless? Love. Yeah. I never knew what I would. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I a tell. timeless one. Yeah. Yeah, no, I literally was just watching a TikTok yesterday of these kids, at, and they look like they was in middle school, like middle school dance type vibes, screaming at, at the top of their lungs, singing that song. I think girls will keep like the the, the R and B time the songs going. Yeah. females are gonna always love that love song, feel good music, like vibe. Like you had me over, and now I'm about to sing and cry about it. Girls gonna always love that. Yeah. But like far as the like the men, these young don't know about that. Like they don't even care. Damn. They, they wanna hear drill music. That that part. Anyways, let's wrap it up, y'all. Thank you for coming, Skilla Baby. Thank you. Appreciate you so much. Um, thank y'all audience for watching and sleeping. Um, we out, y'all. Peace. <laughs>